Hello, everybody. Um, I wanted to really thank everyone uh, in an unbelievable way. Uh, you know, I'm so thankful for all the help um, that everyone has uh, worked on together. Um, let's just get to the point here. Um, you know, so basically, my friend wanted to have me work on a film project specifically about Idaho and specifically about the end times. Um, and uh, I'm very fortunate and grateful to be able to help um, <clears throat> with this project called The Last Prayer. Um, and uh, I just wanted to say something really funny. So th this was really supposed to be about Idaho, right? And it definitely is gonna be about Idaho. But uh, when you look at what has happened on our planet um i was looking at some major um conflict and um there's certain words i don't like to say um but essentially some terrible things have happened on our planet and a lot of that is about getting along uh, with our neighbors um specifically mexico um <clears throat> and how that relates to the united states and canada and really all of latin america and the jungle and everything else um so basically uh what i was wanting to say here is that you know we're looking at a film project where we want to like do a story about the lewis and clark adventure um but um i'm kind of sick and tired of hearing about history and we really want to think about what we can do now to help idaho and to help really everyone on our planet <clears throat> um, with this concept of the last prayer um and originally um i came across this i we we we, we realized that the last prayer um in islam is called aisha and that's at sunset so the west coast um really is the last point at which the sun hits the you know basically it starts in in asia uh goes across africa europe then crosses the Atlantic, and then once it gets to the West Coast here, this is pretty much the last moment of light. And it's really exciting to watch a sunset along the Pacific Ocean, um, and also um, here in Idaho, um, kind of this forest system that we have here. So, so I have a number of different like things to talk about. Um, there's been a lot of really um, kind of things going on um and basically we want to put that in context of what this film needs to be all about um which is essentially about freedoms um for everyone on our planet and what that means when things get a little bit well when it's your last prayer um and really lewis and clark were looking to understand uh, a world that that a lot of white people did not understand, right? Um, they wanted to cross the entire United States and map that out into an unknown world. Um, and they traveled with an indigenous native uh, who you may be familiar with, Sacagawea, um, and traveled across the United States. Now, all that is, is perhaps history, and we don't really know what the truth is behind the story. Um, out west uh, in particular um, if you read the travel logs uh, it's a little bit confusing um, and mysterious for Lewis and Clark and the real question is what is the real story and we may never really know uh, th this movie is really about a new story right and basically looking at what we can do to um, kind of like rethink about everything here um on the planet so the really inspiring thing about this entire movie the original author of this movie uh lived in los angeles uh, for over a decade and then moved back to idaho um and you know he he was a white guy um you know he uh was a really awesome person um but there is a lot of racism here in idaho and Really, when you look at this map, uh, we're gonna relook at this entire film and think about um, basically a new perspective of the 
indigenous natives and particularly how Mexico can get involved in this film project. So that was not a topic originally uh, discussed in a lot of films. Um, there's been a few films um, that have uh, discussed the indigenous uh, native peoples um, and basically, as you can see, there's a lot of earthquakes down here. Um, but the notion of what many scientists are saying is that Yellowstone is a super volcano uh, that may explode. So there is a debate. I mean, obviously, you can see from the data here that there is a lot of earthquakes. There's way more earthquakes in the last, I have basically the last 50 years of earthquakes on here. And you can see. Basically, uh, most of that is down here in, in the south and particularly in Mexico. So there's not a whole lot of evidence to support what the scientists are saying, uh, at least in the long term. So uh, that means that there's a story that spiritual side of what we know about Earth. And you can see here, this is the live. This is only the last 30 days. And you can see Idaho is definitely getting quite a lot of this weird, mysterious earthquakes and there's almost like a living being with the head being right here so this super volcano on the yellowstone side is right over here kind of on the back side there's a whole lot of new earthquakes coming in right in the center of the united states um, that's only happened recently i think it's in the last few decades so uh but this is generally considered one of the most serious fault lines in the world uh the cliffs are huge along the california coast here uh you know it could be a thousand feet off into the ocean or more um and even along the columbia river there's you know three thousand feet canyons so uh and that's all from the earth's movement that's a huge i mean just the mass i mean you try to pick up a boulder a boulder can be quite heavy but we're talking about three thousand feet for like a thousand miles being shifted and um, so that's a lot of energy and again so what's the story here that we're trying to come up with now i want to say that at the time of talking about this there's a lot of really stressful things going on not only in idaho but around the world right we got some unspeakable problems um it, it, essentially in israel which is where jesus christ or uh the the prophet muhammad also spoke and then now we're starting to see some very significant conflict there these are people that have nuclear weapons and there's conflict there um and there's many other examples of just terrible things going on especially in russia and other places um and it's just a very bad situation but we need to cheer up and we're also looking at the prison situation and the healthcare situation and also the question of race and ethnicity as well as what the story is um for people um that maybe you need to <laughs> so we need to come up with a really important story here uh, and it needs to be written like we're just trying to understand what's going on on the planet right um particularly in idaho and about the super volcano and what sort of story needs to be written before we actually get to a very disastrous situation. Um, and basically, so most of the Lewis Clark, um, and I'm sorry to go so fast about this topic. I want to try to think about some very important things happening. But essentially, the, a vast part of the journey was on the East Coast, right? They essentially started out of Washington, D.C., and then traveled across the country. And then this Missouri River part here and it wasn't until they got to Idaho, really, that things started to get interesting uh, in terms of the geography um, and mountains, right? So uh, the most of the story that we're going to try to write is actually going to be even beyond Idaho. We're actually going to go down, hopefully, to South America and Chile and discuss uh, kind of the reincarnation of Moses, uh, Jesus coming back to Earth, a bunch of funny things. Um, and try to write a real story about it um, and how that might relate to our freedoms, particularly 
um, with law enforcement, modern law, um, and just the stress of everything that's all on the internet. I hate, I'm actually doing a talk here right now. I don't wanna be doing this talk. I'm kind of in a desperate situation to get help for this project, this film in particular, to make it really fun uh, to help solve some important problems um, and get really have fun doing this project and make it so that we can really I, I want it to be a very truthful project a very honest project and a project that um, one of the best films ever um, because it actually has so much truth in it right we we have a whole in fact we want it to be awesome right so we have this whole story that's never been told before and and we want to look at that so i want to talk about something very mysterious i talked with my uncle um and my grandfather died from alzheimer's and i recently sat down with a friend of mine uh who just got out of prison and you know we looked at each other and i'm like you know a good thing you know me because you know my grandfather had alzheimer's and there's a lot of bad things that have happened and we need to change, you know. Um, but the point is that everything that we know about Earth needs to change. Like we're actually talking about a universe, right? And we're thinking way beyond Earth. And if this super volcano explodes, you know, where do we evacuate to? And the concept there is to basically go down to South America. So this film is about that evacuation and actually planning for it like we're actually going to have a volcano that's going to explode here potentially right and where do we go and we want to film about that exodus and that last prayer for essentially the united states california you know it's sitting they're saying there's going to be a major earthquake that's just going to devastate california as well so uh this needs to be a, a true story and a fun story and um, and it's really based on uh how the Native Americans saved uh, the entire country you know, and basically helped white people get get understand the country, right? So, but here in this story, we're really going to look at how Central America, particularly Mexico, all the way down to Panama, may be involved in that next step of, well, this is the last prayer, but how will the indigenous natives save? all these white people once again and send them all the way down to chile in south america for a new story and we also want to bring in the mormons on this story so uh the mormons in their religion uh joseph smith also was looking to do his own almost his own country he uh moved from the midwest and they started their own police force in Utah and essentially started their own government, um, which was basically a uh, religious organization, right? And basically the Mormons had a secret that they never told anyone. And that is that they believed that the indigenous people were actually part of uh, the whole concept of what God was all about. And I don't mean to say that lightly or not too seriously, but the point that I'm trying to make here is that the Mormons play a huge role. And there's a very mysterious lake right in here. My computer's completely hosed right now. It's um, kind of struggling because there's so much data here. But uh, but my point is there's a story there that is a follow-up story. So the Mormons started the story, but what's the next step beyond that, right? We're actually writing a story about millions of people's lives, millions of people's freedoms. We have so many people in jail, so many people sitting around listening to this, like, come on, this is ridiculous to be talking about this on the internet. And and I want to get done with this, you know, but and I want to actually start working on the film, but we have to have like something that's really unbelievably awesome. So we were missing part of the story here because we don't have it written yet about the whole plan for what this exodus is all about and you know these kind of film projects involve a huge amount of effort um you know and and i don't want to do it with a lot of computer stuff you know we want to do a real film here 
and actually help um, you know hundreds of millions of people understand what the future might be like um, based on this story so uh, so I, I just want to say there's like an unbelievable amount of information here to talk about um, and I am not prepared um, all I want to say is that my friend and I drove across uh, to go see uh, it, we, we basically drove across um, this northern part um, and near the Missouri River and out to these mysterious heads. Uh, they're the supposedly pre first presidents of the United States. They put them in these massive heads on this indigenous land. Um, it's almost an embarrassment. Um, but uh, many people go to these uh, statues and they flick off the presidents of the United States and take pictures. Um, and really that, that park is unbelievable. We met, I, I don't know if I can talk about this, but there was a very mysterious rock and my friend and I spent the night with these native Indians and it was a surreal experience. They were really awesome. But, but if you know about this park, you'll probably know who these guys are because it's a very mysterious rock. And there's like a downtown area. We got a flat tire. Um, my f God was driving at like 100 miles an hour out there, and we still didn't blow the tire. But uh, you know, it was really amazing that we even made it. But the tire mysteriously popped right <laughs> when we got into town, and then we got the flat. So it was like we 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 wouldn't know. Like it was just it mysteriously popped at that point. So anyway. That area, I, I forgot the name of the place, but it's really a vital part of the film. Uh, I don't know what scene we want to do there, but certainly uh, it's an important one. You can see on the Yellowstone map, it's basically east of Yellowstone. Um, I don't have some imagery here on that, but um, but yeah, you know, the main thing is to pray about this because this is going to be a pretty ridiculously... Um, us like interesting project because um you know there's a lot of questions about the history of native indigenous americans and what should happen here a lot of the reservations have been misplaced um and just terrible violations of nature and wildlife and wilderness and i live out here in idaho and one of the scary things is this is like we've cut down all the trees in the united states if i took off this map you'd see that everything has been basically deforested except for idaho and really up north into canada right and in the mountain range right so you can't really deforest it there because it's mountains so idaho is basically the last it's not only the last prayer it's also the last wilderness for really the entire united states there is small forest along the sierra nevada as well as up here in washington and but really the size of it is is really is about Idaho here. So um, I don't know how to say this, but this is a very important thing for the wildlife. This project is going to be 100% um, about the wildlife and what we can do uh, for clean water. Some of the best rivers in the world for whitewater rafting are in Idaho. Um, and the clean, they even call it the Clearwater River. And in the Lewis and Clark trip here, You'll see, uh, I'll show you the, the map here. There was actually quite a spiritual disturbance about what they wanted to do uh, as they got to Idaho. They actually split up and they met uh, back again um, here. As you can see in this diagram, there were some definite differences about what people wanted to do here. Uh, and basically this, this is part of the Clearwater River here. Um, and you can see up here is the Coeur d'Alene Indian Reservation, as well as Sandpoint. Um, and basically, this heads right to where I'm actually talking from right now. I actually live up here in Moscow, and this is Lewiston. And there's this is one of the most beautiful roads. It's better than Highway 1 in many respects. It's called Highway 12 here, and you can see right along here. Um, they actually took part of the river here um, and different areas. But this this road actually runs right along the river. So I'm really sorry if this is boring to you. There are so many creative people and awesome people out there. I am not 
always the most fun to work with on these kind of things. I want this to be a way cool project. I don't want to have to even do too much. Um, if you want to get involved in this, um, for sure, uh, this could be awesome. I met a couple people where I was like, yeah, we need the Sacagawea. We're going to have a uh, Marilyn Monroe and hopefully my probation officer can be Joseph Smith um, and because his name is Joe, so why not, right? Um, but you can see that the farming structure here actually goes to Southern Idaho. This is Boise, Idaho Falls, and this is actually a lot of very mysterious land because Yellowstone is right here and it was actually a volcanic explosion in history that came through here and made it very dark soil. There's actually craters of the moon down here and a bunch of other stuff. So we're gonna have to change the filming location because Lewis and Clark, if you look at this, there was some Southern way, but actually Southern Idaho is where the farmland is. You see the green down here and the river actually does go here through here and up around. So this big, huge area is that super volcano on next to Yellowstone, right? And that is basically Idaho right here. So, uh, and in the center of this, my friend took me to, uh, this is McCall here, uh, but there's called a Redfish Lake uh, at the center of this. And it's a very cool uh, filming spot to do. So, uh, but there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that we need to do uh, to put this together. So I'm gonna take a moment here just to walk around. I'm lucky to even have some freedoms right now. And at the time of filming this, I mean, can you, are you kidding me? We can't even walk around our downtown area. Um, you know, I'm trying to just pike down the street, walk down the street, and I can't even talk about the problems, right? I mean, the police department trying to arrest me for sending an email? I mean, saying hi to a girl in a grocery store parking lot, they want to arrest you. So we got some ridiculous things going on that I can't even talk about. Um, chasing you, threatening you to put you, lock you up in a cage. Uh, hospitals, uh, you know, and mental institutes. So there's a lot of things that uh, we need to look at. Um, but I want to take a moment because I need to walk around a little bit my room is bigger than a jail cell. I'm very thankful even to have my room, even to be able to talk like this, very fortunate. Um, but at the same time, we need to do stuff offline and get this project really started and it needs to be really fun. Um, people do not necessarily want to get involved unless it's going to be fun. Uh, so we got to really keep in good spirits here. Give me a moment, please. Thank you so much. So please excuse me. I am really sorry to admit, let anyone be waiting, even for a microsecond. I just had a little bit of food, a little bit of water. People are around the world. There's people in desperate situations. I'm so thankful just to have a little bit of food and a little bit of water. And, uh, you know, there's so much of this film that we need to really um, emphasize all that we really have in the United States, um, as well as around the world. Um, you know, I, you know, some scenes in this film we want to do about sharing and food and water and, and some of the tough struggles that people in Idaho even go through. I mean, there's millions of people that live in trailers, in shacks, and none of that is wrong uh, or but there's also a way to live better, right? And and share more of what we already have on our planet. And I wanted to re-emphasize this is that I talked with a native indigenous person here in Idaho on the street. And it was a very serious conversation and he, we both looked at each other and he we, we were just, this spirit came over us and we were just like, man, we are not gonna be building more stuff. They've been building and building houses. We need to start learning how to share. Um, so there's going to be part of this film um, in terms of how the prison system works, how the concept of offline works, and how the concept of really sharing everything, like sharing your house, your car, boats. Like I've been in San Francisco, Bay Area. I used to live in San Francisco, a couple of places, 
and Seattle, it should not be entirely empty. We have thousands, thousands of boats dry docked. And so there's a whole huge question about how do we start using everything that we already have on our planet and sharing everything that we have. So uh, that, that's a huge topic on, on the film that we want to work on. Um, and also just the question of the police department, the laws. I mean, we have a current court case going on that is out of bounds crazy, right? I mean, we have – we don't even know – I mean, the, the extent to which technology influences us is maybe is totally out of bounds, right? And to the point of just life and death, right? And I mean, I, I can't even talk about some things. And we need to get the story, the true stories out about what is really going on in the prison system, law enforcement, and talk about it Um in a way that is not just on camera. So we need a, a lot of, maybe the film, you know, 90% of this film may not even be filmable um, because uh, we don't want to disrupt the public uh, or the wildlife, right? It's not about getting the film necessarily 100% correct. It's about really making something that's going to really improve everything for the entire planet. And so... With that said, uh, again, you can see the structure of this mountain range uh, kind of going all the way down to Panama. And the mountains are actually quite taller in South America. Um, but really, we're going to be heading down there with this film, hopefully. So down to Chile and almost to Antarctica. One of the stories that is not in the script yet that I did not talk about is I met Moses here in Idaho. And, and Moses... Uh, why did Moses even come back to Earth? Uh, wow, that's kind of crazy. So where where is Moses going to take? If Moses reincarnated and came back to Earth, at the end times, in the Bible, it says that at, there's a resurrection day. Um, and there's part of the script that you'll read about some of that, um, but we need to get into more detail. And I really hope that Moses will come forward and help us with this project. He lives right down the street. And he's getting old, and we got to get his help immediately and his ideas on what we need to do because really that's a big part of the story is with what he wants if he's really moses right i mean what are we gonna how is this story gonna work i mean where is he taking us why is he taking us and really how that relates to antarctica there's this massive thing that's unknown about our planet and really that's where moses steps in here on the story is that we have this last prayer for our planet and if everything dries up and the only place we can live at is on the pole because of heat and the atmosphere, uh, the ozone is actually created on the North Pole and the South Pole. And so the atmosphere, um, it's just a different, at it's really thin along the equator. So uh, basically as we get down to South America, that brings in the whole question of Antarctica and I have part of the you know, well, well, we I don't really want to bring in Antarctica University and uh, that kind of concept into the film because it's really a private or separate open project. Uh, but certainly there is something to think about there. I'm going to have to try to just stop this film just because uh, right now, you know, so many people need to be offline. It's probably giving a lot of people headaches, create a lot of the people that I work with are way creative and cool and i do not want people sitting around listening to me it'd be way more fun to think about what we can do um but if you're interested in the west coast idaho washington oregon santa california utah nevada colorado all that is going to be really part of what we're doing if you're a if you're mexican all the way down to panama we definitely need to work with you on this project so uh, there's a huge need uh, call your friends in Mexico start making friends in Mexico it'll be a fun vacation at the least uh, to work on this project so there's a lot of stress uh, in the prison system right now particularly down in South America and it's getting to be ridiculous uh, the problems that we're having but there's a lot of food essentially a lot of our food comes from Mexico um, and we have another project that I've been working on called Sombrero 
uh, essentially about Baja, California, and we can probably team up. But I don't really want to team up with them because we, it's really fun to work with new people um, and put fresh new faces in front of the entire world of like who's really awesome, right? So there's so many awesome people out there. Um, and really, uh, you know, this is this is a big project for the entire United States, all of North America and uh, the future. So I really pray for everybody. I'm not feeling too good today. I've been having some bad days here. It's been a little bit completely ridiculous. Thank God, I guess, excuse me, God willing. And um, I especially pray for you that you don't sit around and watch all this and you basically take a walk around, get some fresh air and be so thankful for the freedoms that you already have. There are, like I said, my room is ginormous compared to a jail, jail cell and um, we have a lot of work to do um, and actually we have the ability to really help a lot of people around the world. Um, so uh, thank you so much. I'm so thankful to be able to work on this project and try to help maybe even millions of people, um, but really the wildlife too. So. We have a lot to think about. Um, a lot of those questions on wildlife are gonna be related to Central America. And what I wanted to mention there is that a big piece of the puzzle here is getting people to move out of the jungle and up into Central America. So a lot of that already happened in Colombia and Venezuela, but uh, the population pressure from Brazil is pushing into the jungle as well as Bolivia, Ecuador, and Peru. Um, but definitely starting to see um, and they pollute the rivers here. So we really have an environmental solution as you move north uh, because there is less wildlife, but there's still very important wildlife here. So we need to think about what we can do. Uh, just because we have less wildlife doesn't mean it's less important necessarily. We just have to be more cautious about every little living thing that we see in Idaho. So, uh, but it's important to realize that uh, certainly there's a lot more knowledgeable people um, in Mexico, all the way down to Panama, and uh, in the Caribbean here, and then Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. So, and there's a lot of understanding. So anyway, I'm so sorry to keep you on this thing. Thank you so much, and please uh, try to help make some new friends, and don't even worry about this project. Uh, there's so many things to worry about. If you want to work on this project, for sure we're going to work on it, and for sure it's going to be awesome. Um, thank you so much. So I want to mention a couple last things. Um, you know, we really have an important role on Noah's Ark as well as Moses. And if you know anything history about the Bible, uh, actually Moses was the one that came up with the Ten Commandments. Um, so uh, there's kind of been a swap because in town I found this guy that's Noah, but maybe he needs to be Moses and maybe we still need to find Noah. So the real question here, if you read the details, sorry, hi. Hopefully you're going to be offline as soon as possible. But essentially, the details here is that we kind of need to find an indigenous native Noah uh, and actually use uh, Moses and Noah and kind of look at that in the script. Thank you so much. Please try to make some good friends with this whole entire project and i will be for sure praying for everybody including the wildlife thank you